in our lives, families and church may be consumed and that we might live here as men that are redeemed, released and empowered to do good. Lord, let indeed your power fall today in the name of Jesus. Let your fire fall upon us all. Let it consume everything that is inglorious and let it deposit upon us the powers of old that we might go about doing good in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want to feel you in a way we have never before. We want to become carriers of your presence. Father, let it be today in the name of Jesus. Let those who didn't come not be justified over us that are here. Let there be reasons for us to say indeed that Lord, he is God in the name of Jesus. manifest your power. Glorify your name. Move in a way we've not seen before. Do mighty things in our midst today and let your name be exalted forever. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And if we're God, we say it loud. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Can we clap for Jesus and have our seat? Have your seat. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. 
you are the one that have conquered water. You walk, you walked on the water to church, right? Just like Peter and Jesus. That grace will be forever in the name of Jesus. The grace to walk over the water of life, to march over the powers and principalities, to excel where others fail. That grace is released upon you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm just excited this morning because I trust the Lord that he will anoint us all to do good in the name of Jesus. We are in the days of his power. And so what we are discussing this morning is the day of his power. Brethren, there is one thing that I want to remind us of this morning. When Jesus said it is finished, listen, when Jesus died on the cross, one of the things that people said was, he truly was a good man. They realized, even those who didn't believe, believed. Because they saw the manifestation of the power. They saw the veil on the temple turn off into two. They saw earthquake here and there. They saw dead rising. They had never seen such before. And suddenly they agreed and they said, he must have been a good man. Unbelievers believe by the manifestation of the powers of God. I pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you will share a testimony that will make unbelievers to accept that your God he is God. In the name of Jesus. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? When you should say amen, say a living amen. amen. The kind of amen that made the devil know. The Bible says, when the ark of covenant entered the camp, and the people shouted. He said, the people of Philistines, they knew that something, God is in their midst. The shout inside is the wind inside. Can someone shout a, shout a louder, amen. amen. So this morning, quickly, before we go into the anointing uh, uh, proper, we'll be looking at the days of his power. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 8, Acts 2, 1 to 8, the Bible says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the old house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues, as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. What was the response from the crowd? Verse 5. And there were dwelling in and there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused. Because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? Eight, how is it that we hear each in our own language? in which we were born, Persians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, and so on, even up to Arabia. Brethren, the Bible said they were speaking in the language of the people. There is a language of the people. It takes power for you to be able to speak in the language of the people. There are individuals you encounter and their own problem is that they've been searching for job and they cannot find that day you will need to speak in the language of come let's pray you are receiving your job today everyone you see have a problem that's their language when they open their mouth and they tell you what the problem is it takes power for you to be able to respond in their language is someone listening to me and don't forget as a carrier of the power you are the first to first manifest it in your own life and after that you begin to affect everyone that you encounter i pray for someone today that that which you need, that need to happen in your life for men to know that there is a God that rules in the affairs of men. It will happen today in the name of Jesus. And as the Lord touches you today and you become a carrier of the anointing, the confidence, the boldness will come for you to say, come, let's pray. What is the issue? And as you pray, the Lord will do it in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord has given us in measures, authority, and power. And that is what the Lord will activate today. As we receive the anointing, the power that the Lord has given to you will be activated. And you will go about doing good in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are the one with a portion of land in the village that's overgrowing bushes. 
the house, the house, the lands between, I mean, on your left, on the right of your land have already been built. You don't even have the money to do foundation. I remember many years ago, someone told me, I've been everywhere. And of course, he's gone to America and come back. He's gone to America, he's come back. He was in some other African country. Now he was here. And he came to me and said, they found a job somewhere for him. And that he is planning to go there. And I said, where? He said, Afghanistan. I said, you are not going. Ah, ah. You've been everywhere. And the next is that you are going somewhere else. And this is where you are going? You're not going. What was he looking for? He was looking for solution to financial issues. Brethren, what I'm saying today is that the anointing you will receive will activate that power in you to meet every problem and to solve it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The red for us already, we have prayed. Act 10.38. Act 10.38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing them that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. He had the answer to every man. He could speak every man's language. If he met a man whose daughter was dead, he raised the, de the dead daughter back to life. If he met a woman whose only son was dead, he had the language to speak because he had been anointed. The anointing you are receiving today, that anointing we give you the right word for every situation in the name of our Lord Jesus. When you meet those that are confused, they will not confuse you. When you meet people that are confused, when you finish with them, their confusion will disappear in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Many times they wanted to lay hand on Jesus, but his time had not come. He was anointed. They carried the stone once, the kind they used to kiss Stephen. They raised the stone up. He asked them just one question. Is there anything I have told you that is anything I have done here that is wrong? Healing the sick, is it wrong? They said, no. Why do you want to stone me then for that which I have done if it is good? They said, because you said blasphemy. He threw them one or two questions. They, were dis they couldn't answer it. They, were, they, they, they planned to kill him, but they lost. I don't know the person in the house. Your enemies have planned to end your life, but their life will end in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those that are waiting for you to die, you will attend their funeral. If you don't have time, you will send message of condolence. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was so anointed, I didn't go until his time. I don't know who you are, you've been seeing death in your sleep. Untimely death is not your portion. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. They came to pick him up. It was at the... He was, at the, he, was, he was at the feast of Passover. People were asking, but they said they were looking for this man. How come he's teaching openly and they cannot touch him? Why did they not say they were looking for him? The anointing was too heavy for powers to touch him. I pray for you today. Powers, principality that have been molesting your life. Their activity ends today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Their hold over your family is over in the name of Jesus Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 61, 1 to 3. The Bible said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord, the Lord has anointed me. You will not see the hand of pastor. You will see God anoint you today. In the name of our Lord Jesus. He said, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. You don't know the meaning of that. He said, the next time you meet someone, you're not going to be telling them your problem. You're going to be telling them good news, good tidings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When you step out of church and you receive a call and they say, how is it going? You say, it's going good. You're not going to be one of them that will say, I don't know what is going on. Everything is haywire. There is a casting down. There is here, anywhere you turn. No, your story will change. What you will tell people is that there is a lifting up in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as you minister to your life by faith, you begin to see the reality everywhere you turn in the name of Jesus. I said they asked, is it not the one they said they are looking for? When they were going, they didn't follow them. He came in quietly. 
and quietly he began to build up. And when he built up, he began to teach in corners. And then the Bible says he lifted up his voice. Everybody looked at his direction and they saw him and there was nothing they can do. There might be one or two people here who have run away from people that know them. You don't even talk about village. You, have, you, know, you don't go there physically. You don't join their WhatsApp group. You are so concerned that you don't want them to know. Some are not on Facebook. They are not anywhere. You don't want anybody to know they exist. Because they are afraid of trouble. From this moment, trouble will be afraid of you. In the name of Jesus. That village that chased you away, you will rule the village. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. They came to Jephthah. They said, Jephthah, we have a problem. Come and solve it for us. They chased him away before they were the one that went to look for him. You will preach good tidings. He said, you have sent me to hear the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Comforters don't mourn. Ha! Did you get that? He's anointing you today to comfort those that mourn. If you are the comforter, you cannot mourn. Did you hear that? In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are many things that make people to mourn. None of them will come near your abode in Jesus' name. He said to console those women in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for money, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified, that they may be called the trees of righteousness. Hebrew 1 9 says, Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. So the Lord your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. When they came to Babylon, among them were many people that were chosen to become president. But out of these presidents, Daniel was different because he was anointed to be above the other presidents. Where those who are successful, those who are blessed, those who have testimony, where they gather, when you arrive, you'll be different. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the ones that are blessed, we also know that even though we are blessed, if you want to define blessing, go to Adeni. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. They will mention your name. You want to define blessing? Go to goodness. This is the way to know blessing. Can you say the same to yourself? You want to define blessing? Come to blessing. Somebody shout hallelujah. The standard of God is that the fire must not burn out. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. So when you receive the anointing here today, it's not going to be anointing for a season and then it disappear. The anointing you will receive today as Jesus was anointed and he carried it on the surface of the earth until the day that he concluded his assignment. That's the same way you will carry the anointing until the day you conclude your assignment in the name of Jesus. He says, I beseech you therefore Leviticus chapter 6 verse 12, sorry. Leviticus, I mean Romans chapter 12 verse 1, yes. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, as you receive the anointing today, anointing to go ahead and do good, anointing to speak the language of every man, anointing to meet the needs that will come your way, he said, the only thing you need to do to make sure that this anointing remain is in Romans chapter 12 verse 1. He said, I beg you. It must have been so important. He said, I beseech you therefore, I beg you, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies, the container of the anointing. Present your body. We have been taught today at the, at the, at the Sunday school. Oh, we are Christian, we must socialize. But there are certain circles and places that we, we must not be found. Jesus chose where he went. Wherever he was invited, he went. And he was different in the midst of them. He socialized, but he didn't abuse the privilege. He knew he was a carrier of anointing. He knew his, his, his container was, was delicate. So he didn't allow any hole to punch into the container to lick the anointing. Is someone listening to me? 
Because you are living here empowered. And how long you carry the power is how much you maintain the container that carries the power. Did somebody get that? How much obedience you give to the one that anoints you today. And like I told you, you're going to see the hand of God, not my hand. How much obedience you give to the one that anoints you today will determine how long the fire will stay. In Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing will leak my anointing. Not fear. Peter was also fearful. Because he relied on the hand of strength, on the might of man. Jesus said, Those of, when, you know, Jesus was talking to them when he was about to go. He said, When I sent you out, I told you don't take a wallet. He said, Yes. Don't take a purse. Yes. Don't take an extra cloth. They said, Yes. He said, But now, let every man pack his bag. Let the one that has no sword buy one. And one of them said, We have two swords. Not long after that, they came to arrest Jesus. And of course, they had to sword. One of them brought out the sword to remove the hair of another man. And Jesus said, it's not like that. You are not going to do that. You live by sword, you die by sword. The sword I was talking about to you is the word of God. Is someone listening to me? You know that song? Satan don't fall for God. Uh, macha, macha. You think the devil listened to that? Jesus said that to the devil when he came to him? No, he didn't say that. He said, it is written was quoting for him Psalm 91. It is written. Say, let him that has no sword, let him get one. Let, him want, let the one that has not come near the Bible for a long time decide which chapter of the Bible he wants to start reading, which book he wants to study. This is March. Because brethren, we're going to confront every situation and we're going to speak the word of God to that situation. When they will come, maybe in the dream, maybe in reality, and remind you that your father, your grandfather, they made an arrangement and it is time for you to die because they said that all the male in their family will not be 40 and so you are going to be 40 in a year, so you need to go now. You'll be able to say it is written, I shall not die. But live to declare the glory of the Lord. He said, no, but your father signed it with blood. It was inked with blood. And then you'll be able to respond that, yeah, that make it legally possible for you to take me. But the Bible says even the lawful captive shall be delivered. And the prayer of the mighty shall be set free. Let him that has no sword get two. Say get one. They said we have two. But they didn't have. They were relying on the strength of man. No wonder when that small girl came, a mate, a mate, came and told Peter, you are one of them. Peter swore. He probably said he used the head of his father and his mother and his grandfather to swear that he was not. He swore because he was relying on the strength of man. But after the day of Pentecost, boldness came. Confidence came. And so, now, after you live here, if the devil does not try you, it's because you are not carrying anything out of here. You didn't get it? If the devil does not come your way to say, here I am, after now, it only means that you are not taking any anointing out of here. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The devil is going to challenge. And then you will confront the situation with the word of God, with the power of the anointing that you have upon you and tell the situation. I don't know how it's going to come. The place they say you should come for interview, they're going to call, call back and say, uh, you don't need to come. He said, the reception, they said, no, please check again. I think I need to come. Please check again. I think I need to come. He said, okay, let me check. I was going to take a job sometimes ago. And they said, I just saw you yourself, yourself, yourself. Ah, I didn't know the meaning. I was still in Nigeria when the letter came. Uh, accommodation for yourself something for yourself yourself i didn't know the meaning sincerely i didn't even talk to anybody i just took my email they are whoever 
this yourself, 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 yourself. Uh, please, I'm married and I have three children. So the accommodation I'm thinking you should give us is to be for myself, my wife, and three children. The kind of car you should give us should be for my wife for her, and three children. And I didn't hear from them again. And then I kept quiet. You know, the best time to look for a job is when you are doing one. You are not under too much pressure. Not long after that, I sent again. I said, I have not heard from you. And they said the problem is that uh, we are thinking of only bachelor. I said, okay, if you change your mind, I will be here. And then they changed their mind and contact me. I said, only two children. I said, which one of them should I drop? Then they said, okay, for you. Finally, I joined them with the three children. <laughs> so we came here. And when we were here, we became four. They are, you are all invited to the naming ceremony of our baby. And kindly remember that we are now four. You understand? So when it was time for vacation and we were doing the booking, ticket was me, my wife, and four children. Did you understand that? They used two, two weeks visa to bring me down. And I, at the, of those things, I don't know the meaning, you know. I'm talking about 2008. So I came. And I met them. And they said around 10 a.m., I will be meeting some people for interview because it was consultancy for government. So we're going to meet some government people in Abu Dhabi for interview. I said, okay. And then he mentioned, I said, please try. Because uh, if you don't do well, you might have to go back. When I was coming, I came with China Southern. China Southern Airlines. I think he's asleep now. He doesn't fly in Nigeria again. And all the way, they were asking me what our pastor, what I didn't get what they were saying. So I practically slept from Lagos to Dubai, you know, on dry. Because what they were saying, I didn't get it. Pastor or what? I didn't even know what pastor is. And then when we arrived in Dubai, around 3 a.m., July 9, I left home July 8. Everybody was coming out. I also wanted to come out. The heat that welcomed me, so I kind of reversed back. The guy behind me practically pushed me, like, you have come, you are going. So, and then the driver found me and picked me up and we're going to Abu Dhabi. I, I, I was the one that had flown like eight hours. I was the one tapping him to wake him three times. So when you combine all those things together, I was already thinking about my wife, my worry, how to go back, my orando. You know, my mind was already. And one guy said, maybe I've told you that one before. He called while I was with my boss and told my boss that I had that new manager is leaving. Uh, he will regret. So I was thinking, is this the regret he was talking about? So when I now go to the office and say I should try, I said, why? He said, because if you don't pass the interview, you might need to go back. I said, that's not a problem. I said, really? I said, really? Have you not resigned where? I said, I have. Well, I just need to tell my guys. Guys, I'm back. Oh. It might not be where I left, but you understand? Then he, said, he told me the truth. He said, for us, it's a problem. So please try. Now I got the understanding. You know, later on, I got to know that it doesn't matter what I was earning. I was actually not earning that much. But when I was negotiating, I only was asking for accommodation, car, food, that the salary when I joined, I discovered that in the team, mine was the smallest salary. But I had a three bedroom flat in Abu Dhabi, I had a land cruiser, and I had a place I can go to and take things and sign 50 dirham per day. So you, you understand, but my salary was the least because what I did was to see what were they paying me where I was. And I asked them, can you pay that? Say yes, with this and this and this and this. Say yes, okay. Cut a long story short. I went for the interview. And I finished. And they called them there. 
before I got back to the office. They told them, ah, oh, that you got a good guy. Ah, oh, you should get this kind of people. You know, we are not many here. Nigerian professionals are not many here those days. So you, you get this kind of people, you know. So when I got there, of course they didn't tell me the result. When I got there, they were already waiting. Ah, oh, congratulations. I got to know later that each day I work, they are only about one thousand five hundred dollars. Each day that I sign that I have worked, company get one five. Me, I didn't get five. If I got five, it would be in dirhams, not in dollar. I got to know later. But the confidence with which I was asking, give me this, give me that, give me that, I didn't even know what they stand to benefit. Do you understand? I didn't know what they stand to gain. But the way I approach life is that if he says he has given us sound mind, then we should use it. If we are receiving the anointing today, you know, don't underprice yourself physically. Don't underprice yourself spiritually. Don't agree that it is possible. When the devil bring this one, that one, tell the devil that's not possible. Are you listening to me? You stand between, in front of the one that is that thinks he has authority over you. He's taking decision. And you are prophesying by your anointing, Lord. This man cannot say, this. he's already saying, please, can you get out now? Can you go now? And you say, Lord, even if I live here, I'm living here for a season. I'm coming back here. He cannot say this. You understand? If he doesn't work with what you want, what, we, what the Lord wants for your life, don't agree to it. No agree for the devil. If they ask you how far, he said, the man said it's not going to work. So what are you doing about it? He said, call him again. What did Jesus say about that wicked judge? He said, if the wicked judge will not rise up and do it because of the woman that is banging the gate, he will do it so that he could have his rest. A woman came banging the gate of a wicked judge and was telling the wicked judge, please judge my case. And the judge was not going to respond. Jesus Christ said, even if he will not respond for the sake of the woman, won't he do it for himself? Do you understand me? I've told you the testimony of my visa. I've told you. If you're waiting for it to be that, if you're waiting for the devil not to test the anointing in your life, then you are joking. Why is the devil having upper hand up to it now? Because as soon as the devil brings the test, you don't think about testimony. You only see the test. How can a man have testimony without a test coming to him? How do you become a champion when you do not fight a battle? So the anointing you received today, Jesus, for 40 days was in the wilderness. Soon as he finished, I say, now, what was the first he saw? Devil. Wanting to finish all the anointing in one day. So when you step out of here, it's not impossible that that business that you thought is already in your hand, they can call and say, that supply, not worry again. Tell them, say, I worry. What happened to you that time? Don't be worried. What happened? He said, we are thinking uh, we are not doing it now. I think you guys need to do it now. Do you understand? You have to do it now. If you say, okay, he's going for a meeting. When are you finishing? Because I'm calling you back. If you block your line, use another line. And, and I'm not joking about this. If you agree, you know, agree, oh. They said they increased my rent in December. I just went to the new and the man said it's increased. Uh, I said, no, it cannot be increased. I said, Can I meet him? No, he doesn't like anybody meeting him. Give me a plain sheet of paper. They are owner. While I love to continue to stay in your house, I would prefer that it is at the same rate that I paid last year. I have been a lawyer tenant for this number of years. We started when rent was unbelievably high. When it fell down, you, your people call and reduce it. So if it will rise, I think we should discuss as well. So I would prefer that you leave the rent as it is this for this new year. Thank you very much. My name, signature, flat 1302, sign. Help me to give him. 
Then I left the place. Following Saturday when I was in town, I went back to the office. He said, ah, ah, yes, he has approved the reduction. Now, tell me, we have in my own block, we have um, 28 floors, 4 per, so let's say 4 times 30. So we have 120, and then there's another block. Out of these 200 plus tenants, how many do you think will write letter to say don't increase my rent? How many? Maybe only me. When he saw it, he said, oh, how much is the increase? They told him, not even up the town, leave it. Not up to a thousand dollars per year. Okay, leave it. I could also agree. And now I'll be on extra 250 dirham every month. 250 dirham will not build a house. But can you all bring 250 dirham for me now? So why should you just throw it away? Do you understand? You don't agree because someone has said no. The anointing you carry is anointing that will attract no, but you are the one that will push the no back. When does light shine? Is it not when there is darkness? When will the anointing work? When there is something for you to work for. Do you know why you don't pray on your food against poison? Because either you prepare it by yourself or your wife prepared it and you know if I die now, waiting, I lose nothing, I should go suffer. So you know if you poison them. Right? When you pray all the prayer, Father, sanctify this food, you don't say, Lord, if there is poison here, help me to neutralize it. Do you? Because you have that one in your hand. But if they told you that you are the new missionary going to so-so-so place, but every missionary that has gone ahead of you, they poison them. When they bring you meal, what are you going to do? Say, Pastor, the thing that they call, you know, eat, so I say, they pray. <laughs> say, okay, in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So can you eat now? Say, I'm not still convinced in my heart. Because you've had, you see the burial ground of those who came before you. One missionary said he got to that place and they told, if so so woman bring you food, don't eat. And he went to God and said, God, what do I do? God said, eat. All those things have not finished. When the so-so woman brought the food. And he looked at the food. He looked at the sitting room. Nobody is here. So he carried the food. You know where they play? There's this kind of game they play. They call it Ayo. A-Y-O. You know, he carried the food and went to where those people who carry, who play this thing, go to. And started talking that, ah, thank God for mama, so-so-so, for bringing me this food. And then sat down in their presence and ate it. And he must have been a dramatic person. He said, after he finished the food, he was now doing. And then people started saying, but didn't, didn't anybody warn him? But we told him. He you know, told him. And he said, there is nothing. Tell her I want one more food. I mean, you can imagine what happened next Sunday in the church. Full. But they've seen the conqueror of Mama Sososo. And so when you live here after this anointing and the devil brings anything where you live, where you walk, remember the anointing. Remember the grace that you have received. Remember the fire that fell. And remind the Lord of his word. Hallelujah. Jesus told them, those of you without sword, get one. Shortly after that, they needed it. When you will need this anointing after the service, not cry out. Call me later and say, Pastor, God did it. You understand that? Don't call me during the battle. Don't call. Don't say, ah, because you can't coordinate. Face the thing. Tell the thing. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out the devil. In my name. I'm sorry, I'm not belittling uh, deliverance ministry. It's a huge ministry. Wonderful. Fantastic. But that's the first ministry we all receive as soon as we believe. This sign shall follow them that believe. Not for deliverance minister alone. Why they became deliverance minister? It's because they exercise that scripture again and again and again and again. And when you do something again and again and again and again, you become a professional, right? That's what has happened to them. That's what made them uh, deliverance minister. 
And if they decide to go to the other side and start making money, it's because we have others who refuse to develop what those ones developed. Brethren, in John chapter 15, verse 1, it says, I'm the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. John 15, 1. 2 says, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that he may bear more fruit. Do you understand where deliverance ministry comes from now? They bear fruit. This sign shall follow them that believe. They use it. They use the scripture. They address situations. They talk to situations. Do you understand? I wasn't born in the village. I wasn't raised in the village. But I've seen strong things. Because going to village was like a luxury. So anytime we went, I want to hear from those elders. I will listen. And they told me about one tree beside the other that nobody touches. Say that tree, no blade, no knife must touch it. And one day, one woman said, eh, I mean, during that my vacation, he called me and said, eh, Can you help me to cut the branches of this tree? I had never heard real cutlass in my life. So it was an exciting thing. I climbed the tree. I even forgot I would come down because the place I would put my leg when I'm coming down. I caught them all. So on my way down, I had to use my chest to just draw down the tree. Nobody can climb that tree again because nothing to put leg. I caught all. I even caught something. I caught every branch. And then I showered, I dressed up, and went to my grandmother's place. When I got to her house, she said, Ah, you said you will come by one. This is 4 p.m. I said, Mama, this asked me to help cut that tree beside our house. He said, is it the one behind your father's window? I said, yes. He screamed. He said, they don't touch it. Blade does not touch it. Knife does. I said, I, I use cutlass. <laughs> I said, there's no single leaf on that tree now. Not one leaf. So when I said I wanted to start going back home, he said, I should wait more. Maybe she wanted the thing. When the thing wants to start, it will be in her presence so that she could know what to do. For, of course, finally, I went home. Following morning, she was the first to come to my father's compound. To come. <laughs> yeah, I said, Mama, I am here. I, I was hearing her noise. You know, grandma to a mother. Noise was much in that compound that day. Can you tell your own children to climb the tree? I was thinking... So his children will, our children will have taken that shine from me. <laughs> I climbed that tree. It's in the midst of darkness that light can shine. If you run away from every darkness, when will you shine? Don't go look for it, but when it comes your way, face it. Don't look for trouble, but when trouble comes, don't quake. Stand your ground. Make pronouncements. Say the right words. Tell the situation. I didn't look for you. You've come look for me. Death could not hold him captive. You can't hold me captive. Bible says I shall be the head and not the tail. So I am over, I'm an overcomer. My own anointing is even different. I was anointed full pastor in 2010. That's the year of conquerors and overcomer. So when they come right here with their two left legs, I say, my friend, stop. Don't bring it here. He that dwells in me is greater than he that lives in the world. We must know, we must manifest the anointing that we receive. We must go out of here and begin to manifest the goodness that he's talking about. He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He didn't stop them from wanting to stone him. He didn't stop them from wanting to arrest him. In Acts chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8, Acts 3, 1 to 8, the apostle, they entered the synagogue. They healed the man that was standing on the door, that was sitting there begging on the, on, at the door. And after that, I mean, affliction started. They even arrested them, put them in the jail, told them don't speak about in that name again. They asked them, no verse, should we obey man or obey God? They said, dim your light. Stop shining. Don't raise the anointing again. Don't pray again. One of our pastors he was, they brought him here to do a job. He didn't like that job, but that is the job that did his visa, so he was working. 
in the factory. He said they asked him, what are you saying to yourself all the time? He said, I'm speaking in tongues. Walk is moving. It's like saying, be stacking this chest. The chest stacking is going on. Right? The one you can say is that he's not walking. He was walking. So what are you saying every time? What are you saying to yourself every time? He said, I'm speaking in tongues. All of you have something you hang somewhere. You know, you see them with lemon. They hang lemon. They hang uh, chili. Nobody is asking, why are you hanging chili? You are not asking them, why are they hanging chili? Suddenly, the office boy will come with a, a, a plate with some apple. and say, do you want some? That apple has been standing in front of something they bought in Lulu. There's this other sculpture they bought in Lulu of, of some things that look like boy or girl. They will just buy a small, small one. You bring apple yesterday, you put it in front of it. Today, you bring a new one, put it in front, take that off yesterday, slice it and ask, anybody want apple? Okay, who will eat that apple? The apple has received all the negative energy as they believe. Now it's time to share the energy back to those who brought it. The lemon is to attract negative energy. That's why you see them change it and put a new one. If lemon is in water and it goes down, it means that it has soaked so much uh, negative energy. So they empty it and put a new one. They are not afraid to do that. You are the one that cannot pray on your food so that they don't call you fanatic. You are the one that cannot speak in tongues. And they say, what is that? Uh, it's personal. Do you understand? When you stand in front of them, he said, the Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. It's the anointing. I pray for someone today that as you go out of here, as you receive this anointing today, will never remain the same in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, it takes away. But every branch that bears fruit, it prunes that it may bear more fruit. As you go forth and begin to manifest the anointing, the anointing will increase in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You will testify. Those who encounter will testify. The Lord will put a smile on your face. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to bow down your, our heads and talk to God. Talk to God. And tell him and say, Father, I want an anointing that single me out in the midst of others. An anointing that will make it evident that I am different. An anointing that will make people know that the hand of God is upon me. An anointing that will make me to stop being ordinary. An anointing that will make oppression to be far from me. Brethren, it is possible God is still anointing people. And that's what is going to happen today as we trust the Lord. Can you pray to God? Can you just rise on your feet and talk to God? Can you rest on your feet and talk to God? I want an anointing that is unusual. An anointing that is uncommon. Anointing that will break every walk of wickedness in my own life. And in the life of the people I minister to. What is your need? Anointing can draw that answer to your prayer. Anointing can break every yoke. Anointing can reverse every walk of the devil. Anointing can rewrite the history of a man. I told you Peter was relying on sword. But when he received the anointing, in Acts, the Bible says he stood with boldness immediately after the Holy Ghost. He said, this man that you see here today, they are not drunk. But there is fulfillment of the word of God in the book of Joel. He began to quote scripture. He never did before until the anointing came. Let every other name fade away. Ask the Lord today. I'm, I'm not living here ordinary. Lord, I'm not going out of here with the problem I came with. With the desires that I have. Lord, I'm receiving before I leave. Solution to all the challenges in my life. Solution to the challenges in my family. Solution to the challenges in my home. I'm receiving anointing for freedom. What you need might be different from what the other man need. Anointing for productivity where I walk. Anointing for fruitfulness in my home. Anointing for breakthrough. Anointing for peace. Anointing for greatness. Anointing for testimony. 
There is a testimony you will share, and everyone will know that God has started with you. There is a testimony you will share. It will be evident to everyone that God is in the affairs of your life. Talk to God this morning. Talk to Him. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Tell the Lord, I want to leave here a different person. When Anna was leaving Shiloh, she was fulfilled already. The Bible said, her countenance brightened. I want to leave here a fulfilled man, a fulfilled woman, a fulfilled family. Tell the Lord. If you are here, you have not given your life to Jesus, just come out here, let me pray for you quickly. You have not surrendered you your life before, or you gave your life to Jesus, but something happened, and you want to reconcile with God, come out here, let me pray for you, even as we continue. Anyone in that condition, just come out quickly. You want to surrender your life to Jesus, you want to reconcile your life to Jesus, come here quickly, let me pray for you. The rest, rest of us, can we lift up our two hands? I want to pray for us even before the ushers begin to lead us forward. I want to pray for us. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we gather here in this place, trusting you for our own day of Pentecost. The Bible says on the day of Pentecost, your fire fell. And every man began to hear their own language from these 120 people that received. Lord, we present your church unto you today and every soul here. Let your fire fall now in the name of Jesus. That fire burnt off every cowardice in Peter and replaced it with boldness. That fire that fell transform the life of the men that witness it completely there is a transformation needed in lives and families today let your fire bring it in the name of Jesus as many that have trust you that your word that comfort out today is not returning void I pray that your fire be released upon them in the name of Jesus concerning you I decree receive the fire of the Holy Ghost by the reason of this anointing receive the fire that separates a man from the rest a fire that makes a man to be outstanding receive in the name of jesus a fire that turns to solution to every problem in the life of a man and family receive it today in the name of jesus that anointing that bring testimony that anointing that make men to know that the lords that done you good that anointing receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Almighty, I ask for a move of your power in a way we've not seen before. That your children live here manifesting your power everywhere they go. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Can you just bless the name of the Lord and give God praise?